Okay, uh, this video should probably be pretty short because I, I don't have a lot of intelligent things to say. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Tonoharu series, which is a graphic novel series that's been published in three parts. Uh, part one, part two, and part three. Um, I, I'm not sure I would ever have tracked these down on my own initiative, but I had a friend who had read them and uh, thought I would be interested and passed them on to me. And uh, I read them and um, they definitely struck a chord, uh, some, some memories. Some background, first of all, these comic books were done by somebody who was on the JET program as an assistant English teacher, uh, just like I was. Um, so, uh, he depicts um, very well in some cases a lot of kind of the everyday things that are life for an assistant English teacher in Japan. Um, kind of the isolation you feel a little bit, being kind of the only English speaker in the group, the sense of in, in the school. Uh, often in the town, uh, in, in my case, there was one other assistant English teacher in the town, but I didn't, I didn't always meet up with them. You know, there would be a couple days or like a week where we didn't see each other because we were both at different schools. Um, so you do, you do kind of feel a little bit isolated sometimes. And he captures that very well in the comics, as well as just lots of things about Japanese life that would strike a foreigner as odd and which, uh, you know, you notice when you're living in Japan. Um, now, these books, as far as I'm concerned, these should be required reading for everyone who's considering going on the JET program. Like you got, you want to go on the JET program, you applied, you got accepted, you're waiting to get shipped out, read these books. Because I think being forewarned is forearmed, you know. Um, and it's not like, I think, one, one criticism I do have of these books maybe is there sometimes the tone gets a little bit too pessimistic. Where I think like, when I was on the JET program, um, it was like the best years of my life, especially the first year was a little, I, I stayed way too long. That's a separate story. I stayed way too long. I, I was, um, that's a separate story. Um, so I was on the JET program for three years and I was in Japan for another five years on various other adventures. The first year on the JET program, it took a little bit to get established. Uh, that's somewhat just me to kind of figure out who your friends are and what not. But by the second year, once I knew who my friends were, I had established friends, I had established routines, I, kn I knew where the cool places to hang out were, oh, I just had a blast. I think that, that second year was like one of the best years of my life. Which, you don't get so much in these books. The tone is maybe a little bit pessimistic. Uh, a lot of shots of people walking and being isolated and stuff like that, which is part of the experience. Uh, especially at first when you first get there, but it can it's it's also a lot more fun than maybe you would get the impression you would get from these books. But nonetheless, uh, this side of the experience is there. So every everyone who's go considering shipping out with the jet program should definitely read these books because if if you know this is coming in advance, then it can't hurt you if you know it's coming. Um, the question is, I guess, whether these books would be of interest to anybody else who has no experience teaching English in Japan or no desire to teach English in Japan, why would you read these books? And I don't know, maybe, maybe you wouldn't, maybe there's not a good reason to read these books. Uh, the only two recommendations I can make is one, they're short. I mean, I, I know it looks like a lot to read when I'm holding this up like this, but like, it's a comic book. I mean, and you know, and half of these pages aren't in even words here. There's a lot of silent panels. So you, I, this, this part three here, I think I read this whole thing in like 30 minutes. Uh, so, you know, 
as a reading commitment goes, it's very minimal. So you, you probably wouldn't want to pay $25 for the hardcover copy of this, but you can see these these books were in a library at one point. Uh, the reason my friend was able to pick them up is because they were at a used library sale. But you know, if you can get these at your local library or somehow without paying hardcover prices for them, then why not, huh? It's just a very quick read. Uh, the other thing of interest is there's an incredible amount of attention to detail on the pictures here. Uh, and the artist talks about this in a YouTube video, which you can just search for. Just search for the artist's name, uh, Lars Martinson. Where is it? Uh, it's in very small print here, Lars Martinson. And uh, he has a couple of videos on YouTube where he talks about his artistic process and how much incredible detail he put into some of these scenes uh, in some of these panels. And uh, interestingly enough, what that cost him in terms of time and kind of lost opportunities because he spent so much time on this one project. Um, and after having watched those videos, I've got kind of a new appreciation for how much incredible detail is in each picture. I, it didn't strike me the first time I read it though. And I think the reason is I'm just a philistine when it comes to art. I've never really been interested in art. You know, I, I like, I like comic books in the sense that all kids like comic books, you know, like they're very kind of visually appealing, but I've never really been able to appreciate the time or the work that the author puts into it. Um, so if you're the kind of person who appreciates that, in other words, if you're an artist or an art appreciator, uh, that would be another reason for you to check out these books. Um, other than that, yeah, you you it may not be of interest to you. Uh, the again the primary reason to be interested in these books is if you like me had an experience teaching English in Japan and you can identify with a lot of what the protagonist went through, or if you're anticipating going to Japan and you want to be kind of like fore, forewarned and forearmed about the experience before you go. There is a lot of things where I was reading this book where I thought, oh, right, that is me exactly. I, you know, I, I remember having that exact same experience or feeling that exact same way when I was in Japan. And I'm not going to go through and list all the experiences, all, all the things in these books that resonated with me. But um, I will say that a lot of it did. Um, so that's that's kind of my endorsement in terms of like how accurate these books are. Again, with the caveat that I said before that they're maybe they, uh, a little bit too gloomy. And again, like those, you have those days definitely. Like uh, I think this is kind of unavoidable part of the culture shock cycle where you do have those days where you feel kind of gloomy. But on the whole, they the whole experience was absolutely wonderful and I would recommend it to anyone um, so so don't don't let these books think make you think that it's more it's it's so depressing but be aware that those feelings are an aspect of it uh, if that makes sense okay that's all the intelligent commentary I have so I'm gonna stop this video now